Hey there, Alex Kidman here, and today I'm taking a look at the Samsung T9 Portable SSD. It's Samsung's latest external SSD drive, and the point of this one is speed, as you can see from that big red number there, up to 20 gig. That's fast. Under certain circumstances, I'll get into that into the review bit. This will be a video in two parts. I'm going to do the unboxing here, and then it'll flick straight through to the review bit once I've done the actual reviewing. But if you've watched any of my unboxings, you know I tend to just do them live. So whatever happens, happens. If this ends up catching fire, you'll be able to see all of it. It's probably not likely to catch fire. The only thing I have come prepared with is some scissors. I've been down that road before because there's still some plastic here. So let's have a look at what you get in the box. I apologize because I can't keep all of this in frame all at the same time, but all I am literally doing, you can see, is just scoring out the tape there so that I can actually open this without tearing the box apart. I mean, if this was a one you had bought yourself, then you know, tear the box apart all you like. Uh, Australian consumer law would even protect you if something went wrong. You don't need to return things in their box. Handy little consumer tip there while I unpack this particular drive and uh, well, now we've got a different box. Yay, boxes. And we open up to flip it upside down. I'm doing well here, folks, doing well. And then we've got the drive itself. That's a nice looking thing. Can I get it out of the enclosure there? Yes, I can. Okay, so actually this really reminds me of some business card holders I've got. Remember business cards? They were a thing. I mean, I suppose they probably still are in certain circumstances, but uh, they're certainly a very deprecated thing. Straight up, of course, just USB-C interface there. Nice solid rubber interface. I believe it's rated for drop protection to a certain degree, but not water or dust ingress. Not that you should be submersing any drive in liquid if you can avoid it. But the feel and touch does remind me an awful lot of the T7 Shield. And I've actually got one of those to the side here for a quick visual comparison. And yeah, I mean, okay, you don't get the kind of ridges thing here, but they've got that same kind of rubbery feel to them, if you know what I mean. I will put that to the side. Let's have a quick look at what else I have in the box, although I'm not imagining it's going to be all that enticing because it's probably just going to be a product manual and a cable. And oh, look, I'm a genius because here's a cable. Oh, here's another cable. Oh, I see. USB-C to C and USB-C to A. Wasn't entirely expecting that. I think I'm going to have to have my genius license revoked and then your standard product manual. So I should get to testing this little wee beastie. You won't have to wait long, of course, because this will just jump straight to this after some time has passed for me to do some testing. <laughs> I'm back, and the T9 has been tested. Now, on the design front, relatively few notes. I do like this little kind of corrugated feel to it, which makes it very obvious in the hand and does give it a little bit of protection. The one thing I will say is you might be able to see the really fine mesh there, and you can probably also see all the dust and stuff that it attracts. There's really no way around this, and it doesn't affect the way the drive operates at all in any way. Makes it a bit of a sod for getting photos of it if you're a journalist, I suppose. And I guess if you were using it in some kind of professional capacity, it's not going to be the best looking drive as a result. That's a very, very small complaint, however. So the T9 Portable SSD is rated for read-write speeds up to 20 gig, and that's blindingly fast. But there's a catch here. That speed is only supported on devices that incorporate a USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 port. And as yet, there's really not that many devices on the market that actually have that, especially in laptop land. And I want to be fully transparent here. During my review period, I have not had one of those systems to test with. I've not been able to put this to its full speed capacity. Now, yeah, that's a limitation. I'd love to be able to do that, but I can't. However, I do feel that for drives like this that are future looking, they're quite likely to bounce between different machines over time anyway. So it's still quite useful to see what they can do on the kinds of regular everyday systems that most consumers and users are likely to actually have right now. Basically answering the question, is this worth buying if you don't have one of those USB 3.2 Gen 2.2 machines? And the answer is, yeah, look, maybe. 
So at a benchmark level, I tested and compared it against the T7 Shield that I showed off before. Now that's an older drive, it's one you can get a little bit cheaper, and it's one I've been using for quite a while. I, I trust it quite a bit. And I was really keen to see what kind of differences, even with this having the brakes applied, I could get. Using Amorphous Disk Mark, I hit much higher sequential read and write speeds out of this drive than I did out of the T7, which is exactly what I'd expect. Now for random write, so that's more likely your kind of small file transfers, your large folders of little files kind of copy stuff. No, there wasn't so much of a difference there. And a lot of these drives do struggle under those kinds of conditions. But if you're looking at this for things like video editing, like large file transfers of single large files, yeah, this is a really nice fast drive. If you want to check, I have the full table of those in my written review. There's a link in the description below as per usual. Now, Samsung provides its own disk utility on the T9 Portable SSD for Windows and Mac systems, as well as a text file basically telling Android users to get their apps separately via Google Play. Now, one quirk here is that the default install app for both Mac and Windows is actually a slightly limited utility where this actually works with Samsung's Magician software quite nicely and natively, but you have to download that separately. And if you don't know that that's a thing, then you won't necessarily bother. You do not have to install any of these apps, by the way, in order to use this drive mostly to its fullest. But they're a decent idea, especially if you want security encryption and if you want firmware updates down the track. Now, one limitation of the Magician software is that it won't actually do all that much unless you enable the password protected security mode. It basically won't let you in to a whole suite of tools, including benchmarking, for example, shown here, unless security is enabled. For macOS users, it's also worth noting that some features, such as data migration and performance optimization, aren't available at all. If you want those, you'll have to install them via Windows and check them via Windows. But it does work across both platforms. I have tested it across both platforms with really no issues at all. But being USB-C, the T9 Portable SSD isn't just limited to working on PCs and Macs. It's officially supported on Android, but not on iPhones, and naturally I had to test that out too. So look, this is a much, much easier drive to use to use if you disable security for smartphones, as I found out when testing on Android. So I installed Samsung's Android utility and plugged the T9 portable SSD into a Google Pixel 8 Pro, and Google's own files utility could see the drive, could read from it, not a problem. But Samsung's utility wouldn't actually see the drive. It said, no, the drive is not actually plugged in. I'm not detecting an SSD. That's just downright weird. I mean, it didn't stop using it, but I guess if you were looking at this to expand an Android phone only and you did want those additional features, yeah, that's not going to work so well. Maybe Samsung needs to tweak its software a little. On the iPhone side of the fence, look, obviously not officially supported for Lightning-based phones, but the new iPhones are USB-C. So I plugged it into an iPhone 15 Pro and it worked fine with security disabled. Obviously, if you had security enabled, you would see nothing because you'd have no way of disabling that security or at least no way until Samsung develops an iOS app, which I have a feeling they're probably not super inclined to do, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. So is the T9 worth buying? Look, maybe. I've long liked Samsung's external SSDs because they've usually matched up really solid performance at decent price points, bearing in mind that, generally speaking, SSD pricing has dropped over time. However, this is a brand new drive with some brand new tech under the hood, and as such, it has a price premium attached to it. Here in Australia, the one terabyte model sells for $249, Two terabytes will cost you $399, and this four terabyte model I'm holding here runs $599. That's a fairly serious chunk of change. You can certainly get external SSD drives cheaper than that, including, for example, that T7 Shield I mentioned before. That's an older drive, and you can score it for a significant discount over this. So is it worth buying? Well, look, if you just want regular SSD speed, and especially if you're not going to be regularly plugging it into faster USB ports, then something like that T7 drive would be a more economical bet. However, if you wanted that speed flexibility and maybe a little future-proofing thrown into the bargain, it's a pretty good option. Now, that's my take on the T9 Portable SSD. Anything you want to know? Any comments you want to make? Any sledging you want to throw my way? I mean, this is the internet, let's face it. Hit me up in the comments below. Thanks for watching all the way through to the end, and don't forget to hit like and subscribe.